In order to begin our discussion of electrochemical cells, let's look at a reaction between tin and nickel. So we're going to have solid tin, which reacts with aqueous nickel ions. There'd be some counter ion there as well, such as sulfate, but uh, we're using the net ionic reaction here, so the whatever counter ion isn't going to play a part in this reaction. So we start off with that tin being solid. That tin gets oxidized to become 2 plus, and it becomes aqueous ions. And our nickel is going to go from 2 plus and get reduced with two electrons to form solid nickel. Okay, so this will be called an oxidation reduction reaction. And if it's spontaneous in the direction which I've written it, which it is, then the Gibbs energy is going to decrease during that reaction. And the Gibbs energy can be used for some kind of useful work if we can create the proper type of experimental setup. So to write down some of the things that I said about this reaction, the tin during this reaction loses two electrons, goes from a charge of neutral to two plus. So the tin is oxidized because it loses electrons. Oxidation is a loss of electrons. And our nickel goes from a charge of 2 plus, then gains 2 electrons to become neutral in a solid. And so the gain of the electrons is a reduction. So we say that our nickel is reduced, or more properly, our nickel 2 plus is reduced. But I'll just say overall in this reaction, nickel is reduced. OK, and if this reaction occurs in some solution, then it's just going to occur between instantaneous contact between these uh, these ions and metals here. So it's not going to be it's not going to create some useful work that we can use to do something else uh, if it just occurs in solution. So what we want to to create is the proper type of setup where the oxidation and the reduction are separated, and then we can use the flow of electrons between these two reactions in order to create some type of useful work that we can use. So to summarize that, what we want, we want to separate these oxidation reduction reactions to create an electric current which we can use to do work. <clears throat> and the type of setup that we can use to do that is the type of setup which I've drawn over here, which is an example of an electrochemical cell. And more specifically, the type of setup that I have over here would be called a Daniel cell. OK, so let's go through the pieces of this electrochemical cell. So on the left here, we have tin metal inside of this metal, uh, just metal bar right here that we have into stuck into some aqueous solution. So when we have a metal at which an oxidation or a reduction takes place, that is called an electrode. So we have a tin electrode here. And in this reaction, at this tin electrode, our tin is being oxidized. And an electrode where we have a metal which is oxidized is called an anode. And then conversely, we have on the other side this blue bar of metal, which I've drawn over here. And that is going to be nickel. And that is our nickel electrode. And our nickel is being reduced in this reaction. And an electrode where reduction is occurring is called a cathode. OK, so those are our electrodes. <clears throat> then we want to look at what are the source of these ions? Where are our tin ions and our nickel ions uh, being consumed and produced? So in a solution here, we have in contact with this tin anode, this tin electrode, are going to be tin ions in solution. And they're going to be, for example, with a counter ion such as sulfate. And those are aqueous, as I said, parentheses AQ. So this is water with tin sulfate inside of it. And this is just the electrolyte in this side of the solution. And on the other side, in our solution, uh, this aqueous solution over here, we have nickel sulfate. 
And again, it could be some other counter ion besides sulfate, but sulfate's convenient because we have a 2 plus charge on both of these ions, and sulfate is a 2 minus charge, so that makes it a convenient 1 to 1 electrolyte. Okay, so that's our source of our nickel plus ions over there. All right, so we have, as we said, oxidation and reduction occurring. So at this tin electrode here, we're going to have tin oxidized to form, t to form these tin ions, these aqueous tin ions. And so two electrons are going to leave this tin, and the tin is going to go from the electrode into solution, from the anode into the uh, aqueous solution. And those two electrons are then going to flow through this wire up here and generate some type of electric current or some type of electromotive force, some type of voltage that we can measure. And so in this case, two electrons for every oxidized tin atom here would flow across this wire and over to the cathode. So this right here is indicative of the flow of electrons as I've drawn this reaction from the left to the right. Then when we get to the right here, those two electrons are going to go into our cathode and then it's going to pick up a nickel ion from solution, give that nickel ion two electrons, and reduce it, and then deposit that nickel ion as it, just a solid nickel atom on our cathode. Okay, so that's, that's most of what's going on in our electrochemical cell here. We have oxidation at our anode, so tin goes from anode to solution, electrons flow over, and nickel goes from solution to the cathode, but that's a flow of two electrons net over to this side. So as of right now, this has a positive charge and this has a negative charge. So if we don't deal with this buildup of charge quite quickly, then our cell is going to stop functioning because we can't have an electrical imbalance here in order for our reaction and our flow of electrons to keep occurring. So the last thing we need is what we call a salt bridge up here. And as an example of a salt bridge, one thing that we could have is p aqueous potassium chloride in a gel. So it's a gel which prohibits these tin ions and nickel ions from flowing back and forth between these two solutions here. So only the potassium chloride ions, only potassium ions and chloride ions can flow back and forth through this agar gel. But um, these potassium and chloride ions can flow in order to create the electrical balance that we need in order to complete this circuit. So it keeps flowing. Okay, so as I said, we had two electrons flow from here over to here. So two electrons left here, so there should be a positive charge. So that means I need chloride ions to flow this way in order to keep... Uh, the charge down over here, and I need potassium ions to flow this way in order to balance out those electrons that are coming out there. So in that way, the salt bridge completes our circuit. Our circuit goes from solution to anode to wire to cathode to solution to salt bridge. So overall, this completes our whole circuit here, and it's allowed to keep flowing, and our reaction can keep occurring. So just a few uh, final notes here to help us uh, remember a few things about these electrochemical cells and some of the facts about them. So we want to say some sayings about reduction and oxidation. Reduction occurs at the cathode. And oxidation, well, let me use the correct colors here that I've got because I used those types of colors. So. I used I used uh, my cathode here. I used this blue color. So, say reduction occurs at the cathode, and we have the anode where oxidation occurs. So, kind of a helpful mnemonic for these types of things are. Reduction occurs at the cathode, first three letters of each of these, red cat, 
and the anode is where oxidation occurs, and the first two letters of those are anox. So you have red cat and anox, and also with oxidation and reduction, you have reduction, remembering which is a loss and which is a gain of electrons. Reduction is gain, and oxidation is loss. So the mnemonics here are for oxidation is loss, reduction is gain, oil rig. So we have red cat, anox, and oil rig, which are some helpful mnemonics to remember what oxidation and reduction are and which one occurs at the cathode and the anode.